Good morning, Banana Mators. Today I'm going to do something very specific, <laughs> like d d stupidly specific, that probably like four people will actually find useful, but it is a handy little trick. So I work at a place called Pipeline, for those of you who haven't looked me up on LinkedIn or something, and every year we do a Christmas short, and I did the effects for the one that we did last year. Here we go, and there's like a magic time machine, so lots of swirling. And I had to do this pile of non-denominational holiday twirl, where there's like a little bit of, uh, there's like bulbs and stuff flying around. Um, there's like ribbons spinning, got some little menorahs and snowmen. But they have to come towards the camera, they have to rotate in space, and stay vertical. Some of them have their own twirl on top of it, so like the cookie, that's rotated in animation. I hand animated it rotating, and then had it coming towards the camera. Uh, some of like the dreidels are also spinning as well. Um, but that's, that's hand-drawn frames. The rest of it is done through interpolation because even though we do a lot of traditional effects, we want to use interpolation and rigging as much as possible to save time if we're working on tight turnaround. And also, this is something that would just be a tremendous amount of work to animate, and you wouldn't get more than if you automated it. Sometimes hand drawing things gives you more, more life, more spirit, but in this particular case, that is that is not going to happen. So if you just rotate a bunch of arrows, they're going to twirl around the thing like this. All right. So that's what we want them all to stay up. And I've given them all pivot points and we could counter rotate everything if we needed to. But there is a way to fix that. So my first instinct was to grab the transformation limit. The way the transformation limit works is you can tell pegs, and I'm going to pop this peg above here, and we're going to say anything that's on this, we have the decision not only of whether or not it takes information, so we can say do not take the translate x, do not take the rotate, which is what I would think might help us out in this case. And you can also do a percentage. You can say rotate half as much as the thing above it. So if you had to do something where they're turning a little wheel and a bunch of cogs are turning, you could use this theoretically to set up all your cog wheels with like based on a percentage of how big they are and stuff like that to move at different speeds. So theoretically, you'd have one thing turning and you'd want something on it moving half as quickly. So maybe you could automate a clock where you have it move a percentage like every uh, 60 times, every time it rotates one full time, it moves a fraction of the time. But in this case, I we, we think, okay, we turn off the rotate, it won't take the rotate. And that will give us this. We are getting some clocking. Um, and all the things are staying up. So this, I mean, like you could have the, like the the part of the train that goes around like this, the like the the metal bit that goes between the two parts of the train. That would work in this case, but it's not doing what we want, which is to have our stuff rotate in this way, but stay vertical. We have to counter animate that. So I don't want to do that manually. I'm too busy. Let, so what we're going to do is use an expression column, which I have touched on before, and I think it's severely underutilized, all right? So how do you do it? Okay, so to create an expression column, you go to your X sheet is the easiest way to do it. So to do that, we can press this little button here, the Add Columns button. It tells us it's Shift C. We can also right click in here, Columns, Add a Column. You want to make sure to set this one here to Expression. There's a whole other bunch of stuff, and you're like, hey, maybe I have some ideas of how I could use this if you haven't seen it before. And we'll add and close. And now we have EXPR, this is our expression. So if we double the, click this, it will give us this window. Now I know very little, so very little about scripting. I cannot, I cannot help you with scripting. Your best bet is probably the Harmony Discord. There's a bunch of TDs on there that actually know some more stuff about this. I only know it for very limited arithmetic type functions. And this is one where I use it more often than anything else is to counter animate something. So to use the rotation of this peg as a function, what we need to do is put a key on that peg in the timeline. And then once there's a key, you can share its functions. 
So you right click, say, if I right click over here, I don't get that option. I have to right click here on the name on the left hand side and it says share functions. And then in our X sheet, we will have new yellow columns and here it is. So this is peg. I should have named it something that's easier to find, but this is all of its functions that are now shared. So peg angle Z, we can copy that. That's the one that we want to use, right? So we have the value. My keyboard is set to French of this stuff here. We want to multiply by negative one. That's all I know about scripting is this is this to take a value and then multiply it, divide it or add it or subtract it. That's all I know. So now when we rotate, um, we have to tell these here. Moop, 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 moop to counter rotate. So here where we have our angle Z, so this is the rotation of our arrows. We're going to use the expression EXPR. So now when we go to expression, it's already attached to one of our arrows. We can just go along and say, yes, we also want the same expression for these. I don't know if there's a way to automate this. Boop, boop. This is headed towards onion skin territory where he just sets up this like ridiculous thing. Um, but now you can see that anything that we rotate is going to stick to its place and it's going to rotate counter rotate to the thing. So if your pivot point is not directly in the center, like if you move your pivot point over here, then now it's going to rotate around that pivot point. But if the pivot point is right in the center, then it's going to rotate around, but it's going to counter animate in place. And then it's very simple to have them start small and then get bigger while maintaining their direction. Whee. So particles are not always the answer. Um, you could go in and try and figure out how to make some sort of vertex with that. But using a little counter animation expression is a super convenient way to set up things like this. And like I said, it's super situational. But I'm going back to New Land, so I need some content. I'm like, ah, remember when I did that thing? Anyway, <laughs> thanks for dropping by. Like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I will see you in the next video.